Hello, welcome back. We're looking at uh, chemical, e oh not chemical, <laughs> I have so much chemical equilibrium in my mind, I can't even remember where we're at. Um, we're looking at thermodynamics and we actually studied thermodynamics already in, in some senses and so I want to reintroduce some of those concepts in the form of review and, uh, and, then, and then in further videos we're going to show how to, how to use them. Um, but uh, but this should really help uh, refresh uh, kind of the main concepts you need to remember. So um, one thing we need to look at is what is enthalpy, right? So enthalpy um, could be defined as uh, the heat added to a system. Um, so you could enthalpy is, uh, is is any heat or you know energy in the in the form of heat that gets added to a system, right? Um, now. Energy, the first law, of, first law of thermodynamics tells us that uh, energy is never created or destroyed, and so it's either added or subtracted from systems, so or it changes, uh, changes form. And so, and so we can just follow energy as a path, but it just moves from thing to thing. It doesn't, um, doesn't disappear or um, become created. So heat added to a system. So because we know that law, uh, there's a lot we can do in science to figure out this and that, and really um, a lot of reactions and a lot of what goes on in science in our body is just a process of, of heat flowing from one thing to another. Um, so entropy is uh, what we would call a disorder or, um, or sort of randomness, and so the idea is that um, uh, particles, like if this was your, uh, if this was your, your particle, it's uh, ordered, and it's all together, and it's going to want to seek um, randomness or, or disorder. It's going to want to kind of seek something like this. So this would be a change in entropy, where entropy is increasing. Okay? So this would be like positive uh, change in entropy. So an increase in entropy means an increase in randomness or an increase in disorder. And so this is in the, the universe as a whole is going toward a um, condition of randomness. Stuff will eventually, at some point, uh, be completely uniform, randomized as such. Um, and so, um, so then we also have the concept of spontaneous uh, reactions, or spontaneous processes. And so spontaneously um, means that it happens on its own. And so, um, typically, the idea with spontaneous reactions is that um, things are going to search for a condition where they have a lower uh, change in enthalpy. So, um, so negative enthalpy, which means uh, the heat leaves them, right? Um, it, bringing on heat um, is, is usually what accompanies um, uh, putting stuff back together or organizing stuff, right, and, um, and kind of going against this. And so um, it also means then that uh, positive entropy, right, or we could say entropy up. So we could say arrow up for the change of entropy. So spontaneous processes are, are, are things that fall into this camp of where um, enthalpy is going down and entropy is going up. So heat is, uh, you're going from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. If you're, if you're losing energy, if you're losing heat, you're going from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. And in this case, you're going from a organized state to a more disorganized one. Now, um, the, we've been talking a lot about equilibrium, and I just kind of want to bring that into this picture right here, because chemical equilibrium is actually the condition or the state where you have um, these in perfect balance with each other. And all, all this stuff we've been doing with equilibrium, those equilibrium points, those, those um, positions of equilibrium, are when there's a balance between lower enthalpy and higher entropy. And it's got um, the, the most perfect balance between those. Um, and so essentially, entropy actually could be called um, everything at equilibrium. And... Um, <clears throat> and uh, and so and so that's kind of like the basic uh, real reason for equilibrium, and that's why all things will get to a point of equilibrium. Um, so we had an equation uh, back in I think it uh, was chapter five of our book, and the equation said that the um, enthalpy change um, of the reaction uh, equaled 
the sum of the enthalpy change of the, uh, the products, enthalpy change of uh, formation of the products, minus the sum of the enthalpy change of the formation of the reactants. Right? So um, essentially, in uh, regular language, also saying is that a reaction uh, takes apart some things and then puts together other things. And so the idea is the, the energy that it takes to take apart these um, is subtracted from the energy that it takes to put apart, put these together. And um, well, actually, the energy, so then the energy it takes to take these apart is exactly the opposite of what it takes to put these together. So that's why everything is a heat of formation. Of course, these are forming. And so what you want to do is, is uh, subtract the amount of energy um, used to the amount of uh, energy that you ended up with. And um, if you get a negative number, it means that um, we had more energy on the product side than we had on the reactant side. And so then um, we call that an exothermic reaction. So an exothermic reaction is simply one that, uh, that ends up being having a negative change in enthalpy because the idea is that uh, you have reactants, right, sorry, uh, and you have products, and so the, it's negative change because um, on the reactant side you have high energy and on the product side you have uh, low energy. So the change is negative because um, you had to take energy out. In order to go from high to low you had to uh, remove energy, right? Um, and because energy had to be removed, you have a negative change in enthalpy. Because remember, enthalpy is heat added. And so uh, if, if enthalpy is heat added, uh, if heat comes off of the system, then heat has been taken away. So negative H is, uh, is what we call exothermic. And so then endothermic is exactly the opposite of that. And we understand that uh, an endothermic is a, is a process that absorbs heat. Um, and so that would be a positive H because um, enthalpy is, is heat added. And so positively, uh, you have to eat, add heat to an endothermic reaction to get it to go. In the case of an endothermic reaction, your reactants have lower energy than your products. You have to add energy to get from um, your reactants to your products. Um, so they're, they're exactly opposite of each other. Now, that's all review. Um, let's get into a little bit of kind of uh, discussion and um, sort of like how does this work out? Um, what is spontaneous? And there's kind of some things that, uh, some kind of general guidelines that you want to go by for spontaneous reactions. Uh, dissolution. Uh, dissolution, um, let's just uh, say, for example, that um, we take, you know, HCl, a solid HCl, and, um, and we dissolve it in water. Well, you know what's going to happen. Strong acid is going to completely disassociate, right? It's going to completely disassociate into these two ions. And so what have we done here? Well, we see that um, we have definitely created a positive change in entropy, right? Because this is, this is far more ordered than this. Um, and actually, for most things, dissolution is an endothermic process. Um, but the, uh, the drive towards the change in entropy um, overcomes the, the problem of this actually taking heat in in order to, to dis dissolve. So dissolution um, is spontaneous in that uh, things dissolve, but they do it to favor a positive change in entropy, a positive change in S. Um, and so mostly they're endothermic. Um, so we have kind of this idea that for the most part, uh, exothermic things, so because exothermic things um, end up taking, um, taking H down, they're a, they're a negative H, right? Exothermic equals negative change in H. Because they take enthalpy down, um, not, yeah, because they take enthalpy down, they're usually spontaneous, uh, exothermic. But in some cases, um, endothermic reactions or endothermic things are spontaneous, like dissolution. So that's because of the entropy sort of overpowers the enthalpy. And like I said, uh, the whole point is to get to the proper balance between the two. So in the case of dissolution, 
the proper balance um, ends up having this essentially override this. Um, but in the case of reactions, um, you can sort of assume that um, if, it's, if it's exothermic, uh, it's spontaneous. And, so, and what does spontaneous mean? Spontaneous simply means uh, it will happen on its own. Um, okay? It will happen on its own. So um, let's just, I'll just give you a quick little example. Um, for example, a sodium metal, um, sodium metal, very highly reactive. Uh, actually, it wouldn't be positive ion. It reacts uh, with water fiercely, um, but it also reacts with chlorine gas, right? So sodium metal and chlorine gas reacts together um, very much exothermically, releasing a ton of heat um, to make us um, what we know and we have commonly all over the place as NaCl. And so uh, the idea of NaCl is actually a very low energy state, and both of these are extremely high energy states. Um, well, in this condition, uh, this one particularly is a higher energy state than these two combined. And so what happens is uh, your, your energy here to go to here is, uh, is exothermic. So in the case of, of reactions, if you know that it's an exothermic reaction, you're going to guess that it is spontaneous, right? Um, and let's talk about uh, changing states of matter, because that one can be confusing sometimes. Um, so changing states of matter is pretty easy. If you're going to melt something, um, you know, you have to take heat away. So um, let's, say, let's say that um, I have, oh, I've got an example right here. Let's say I have one propanol. So one propanol is, um, is C3H8. Um, and then oxygen right here. And the freezing point is uh, negative uh, 127 degrees Celsius. So um, what, what's going to happen with this? Is this going to be a exothermic or an endothermic thing? Well, um, you know, if, if, let's say we're freezing it, right? So, uh, so freezing this, is that going to be exothermic or endothermic? Well, to freeze this, to get down to here, what do you have to do? Well, you have to take... Uh, so here's, so let's say here's the propanol, uh, and this is like in the liquid, the liquid state right here. Let's say I just splash it on the floor to get it to be uh, solid, right? You have to take away a lot of heat, right? You have to remove heat, negative change in H. So this is going to be uh, an exothermic process. So um, that 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 kind of uh, goes against. Um, goes against a little bit of, of how we think it, but, um, but, that's, but that's the way it works. So this is actually going to be an exothermic process just simply because the heat is being removed. So you always have to think of exothermic as heat removed, endothermic as heat added. Uh, analyze it from that direction, and you, you shouldn't ever have a problem. Um, let's, think about, uh, let's think about this. At what point would, uh, what point would, would one propanol be spontaneous? Uh, at least freezing. This, the freezing of this um, at uh, normal temperatures is not going to be spontaneous. The removing of this heat, it's not going to be spontaneous at normal temperatures. But, but think about it. Anything below negative 127, it's going to spontaneously do that, right? The, the heat, because the environment around it is going to want to take the heat um, from it because the environment around it is cold. So the idea with freezing and, um, and melting and these kinds of things is that if the temperature range is, um, is right, then it's spontaneous. Um, so in this case, if, you, if you're looking at freezing, you want the temperature range to be below the freezing point. Um, and so melting wouldn't be spontaneous then in that case. But what, what, when would melting be spontaneous? Well, as soon as you're above the freezing point, then melting is spontaneous. So changing states of matter, spontaneity changes um, based off your temperature range, right? Um, and then what about the freezing point? I think this is uh, like we have freezing point, we have boiling point. Um, what actually we're, we're talking about is that at freezing point, um, the idea is that you actually have equilibrium. So let's say that, uh, well, I've got it right here. So um, let's get this right here. So at freezing point, let's say that I'm at, I'm at freezing point right here. Uh, this is my liquid phase, and this is my solid phase, solid phase. Um, at freezing point, the idea is I actually have equilibrium between these two, 
And so the idea is that at the freezing point, that is the point where you have an equal amount of molecules going from the liquid phase to the solid phase and from the liquid phase or from the solid phase back to the liquid phase. So that's actually how we define these particular points. Um, and so you know that at, at the freezing point, what ends up happening is, um, you know, so, um, so let's look at our, let's look at our, our like energy. Let's say we had, uh, you know, our, our energy in, right? Energy going in and so our temperature um, if you look at the, the temperature right here, if it's, uh, if it's a liquid, you're, um, you're, you're adding temperature, adding temperature, it's getting hotter and hotter, and then, um, or if it's at a, say we're a solid, so this first one, we're solid, and then this right here is the freezing point, right? Um, and so at the freezing point, it's going to start turning into a liquid, and we know that we have to keep adding energy. It, it plateaus. We have to keep adding energy because we're getting past this equilibrium phase. Um, so, um, so you have to keep adding energy here to shift it toward uh, this direction, and then and then we'll get to the liquid, and then it'll add temperature. will just go, and it'll add, add, add until we get to another equilibrium point, which is going to be uh, the changing into gas phase. So uh, I hope this takes all that stuff we learned about enthalpy and entropy, and sort of combines it with your previous knowledge from this in chapter five. And, uh, and helps to kind of tie in as well the ideas of equilibrium.